Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. All right, all right, stop, stop that noise. Oh, why, well, excuse me, Abbott, I couldn't help it. Ladies and gentlemen. Just yes, strictly to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we introduce our new special feature on the Abbott and Costello program called Start the Music. To the person that can identify this tune, we will give a beautiful television set. Now here's the tune. I know. That's the faint tune in the second movement of George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> Lavermouth. <laughs> through the back door. He couldn't. It was buttoned down too tight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind your Uncle Mike. Uh, who's that letter from? That's from my Uncle Tom. He's still down in Egypt. Now he's got a hem with 3,000 wives. It's great. I can imagine with 3,000 wives. Yeah, he says that every morning when he comes down at breakfast, he sings the harem song. The harem song? What's hmm. that? I call everybody darling. <laughs> bunch of idiots in your family. I don't know why I associate with you. I've got royal blood in my veins. Oh, you have? My grandmother went, went back to Sir Walter Raleigh. Uh, my grandmother smokes a pipe, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, i got to leave now, Abbott. i got a date with my new girl. She's from Texas. She's a real cowgirl. She spends all her time with her cattle. She eats with the cattle, she sleeps with the cattle, and practically lives with the cattle. Are you going to make love with her? Well, only if the wind is right. I... <laughs> Hot tonight, so don't go away. Abbott and Costello will be back after just the time it takes to tell this. There's a crisp new addition to your light summer salad diet of ABC programs, a show with a pocket full of stars, songstress Peggy Mann, the rhythmic starlighters, Edward Gilbert's orchestra, and your favorite 10 o'clock dinner. It's called Name the Movie and features a special quiz on Movie Land with a famous screen personality as guest each week to act as quiz master. Film fans will thoroughly enjoy the opportunity to follow along and test their knowledge of motion pictures, both old and new. Vehicles are the popular screen favorites of today and yesterday. ABC's new summer series, Name the Movie, has everything. Your favorite ballads, the old songs, the ones you ask for again and again. The new fun of a new quiz. A famous Hollywood quiz master each week, plus a talented cast including Peggy Mann, Clark Dennis, and the Starlighters. Yes, Name the Movie is the perfect combination of quiz and melody, so be on hand when it comes your way tonight on many of these ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. What are you so excited about? Boy, did we have trouble at my house last night. Somebody stole my Aunt May's purse with all her savings in it. It was $87. Oh, well, that's a shame. Any old down dirty thief that would do a thing like that ought to be shot. Costello, you ought to find him and shoot him. Ah, but I can't shoot my own uncle. I... <laughs> you mean your Uncle Mike stole that money? That's a serious statement to make. Can you prove it? Apparently, I sneaked in Uncle Mike's room to steal his watch to hock it. <laughs> and there was Aunt May's purse right in his pocket. You were going to steal your Uncle Mike's watch to hock it? Mm-hmm. Why did you do a thing like that? My Aunt May told me to do it. I... <laughs> it's disgusting, Costello. Your Uncle Mike steals money from your Aunt May, and your Aunt May steals money from your Uncle Mike, and oh, your whole family steals money. They do not. My brother Pat never stole a dollar in his life. He didn't. He steals automobile tires. <laughs> Your Aunt 
that may made a <laughs> mad about your Uncle Mike taking that money? No, but if she ever finds out what he did Saturday night, she'll kill him. Well, what did he do Saturday night? Well, you know those two towels they have marked his and hers? Yes. He used hers. <laughs> your uncle might get a job and stop loafing around the house, Lou. Well, he's got a job at the California Highway Traffic Department, and his plan will simplify transportation in Southern California. Well, what is his plan? Now, here it is, and it's very simple. Everybody listen. First, he's going to move Cucamonga to Azusa. Then he's going to move Azusa to Cucamonga. Now, suppose a man wants to go to Azusa, and he's in Cucamonga. He stays home, and he's in Azusa. <laughs> ah, that's very simple. But wait a minute. Suppose a man lives in Cucamonga and he wants to stay in Cucamonga. Abbott, who wants to stay in Cucamonga? <laughs> well, look, when does he start to work with the traffic department? Well, they're breaking him in now. He's stationed up on Mulholland Drive on Saturday night. He's got a sound truck and he hollers out traffic messages to the motors to keep the roads open. What kind of messages? Well, like this. He hollers, uh, Oh, smoochers and knickers, pull over to the side of the road and let the married couples through. <laughs> Stella... Yeah, the whole family are a bunch of stupid ignoramuses. They're all just like you. Did you ever go to college? Did you ever go to high school? Did you ever go to grammar school? When he gets to kindergarten, have I got an answer for him? <laughs> Did you ever go to kindergarten? No, and that's my answer. <laughs> that, Costello, is the reason you are so sadly lacking in intelligence. Yes, but don't forget, what I lack in intelligence, I make up in the stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but don't forget, stupid people don't live long. Oh, yeah, my grandfather's 104 years old, and he's alive. Was he the oldest member of your family, Lou? I got a knuckle on my mother's side, my Uncle Tom Zizimus in Baltimore. He died at the age of 130. He did? 130. Do tell. Last week, we dug him up, and you want to know something, Abbott? Why? He looks better than you do right now. <laughs> Costello, that's a pretty old joke. Yes, and he was a pretty old man. <laughs> Well, I didn't know you came from a family of long livers. Are you kidding? My brother-in-law, Joe Kirk, has a liver 30 feet long. Right? <laughs> you know, it's been, a long, it's been a long time since I heard that joke. Yes, and that's a long liver. I... <laughs> oh, I forgot about your family. Uh, you'd better start worrying about yourself, Lou. You don't look so good. That's because I haven't been sleeping much lately. What do you mean? Every night I have the same nightmare. I dream there's a guy chasing me with a long, sharp knife. He chased me all the way up Sunset Boulevard to Santa Monica, over the mountains, right up to my house in North Hollywood. And that's been going on for the past two weeks. Oh, that's terrible. It is. You must be completely worn out. Well, I would be, but for one thing. What's that? Last night I found a shortcut. I... <laughs> <laughs> Louis, hang on to Louie. It's Abbott's nephew, folks. What do you want, Norman? Uncle Louie, I heard you say you couldn't sleep, and I hope you get some sleep real soon, because when you don't sleep, you get irritable. And when you're irritable, you'll get mad at me. And when you get mad at me, you'll cut my salary. And when you cut my salary, I won't be able to pay my rent. And if I can't pay my rent, they'll evict me. And if I haven't got any home, then I'll be a bum. And you can't expect my wife to live with a bum just because you can't sleep. <laughs> I'm telling you right here and now, your, 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 your nephew Norman ain't going to amount to a thing. Why? I'll tell you why, because last week I got him a slow job. He wouldn't take it. He could have made a lot of money selling Santa and Anita long underwear at half price. Santa, <laughs> Santa and Anita long underwear? At half price. Well, how can they sell it at half price? The factory forgot to put in the $2 window. <laughs> radio cabinet for your wife. And I took a bunch of wires and put them in a box and I sealed it up tight. And when I tuned it on, I couldn't get any music, only loud talking. And for the past week, all I get is talk, 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 talk. Louie, 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 did my wife like the cabinet? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her since I sealed up the box. Mr. Costello, I'm studying radio at night at UCLA, and there's one thing that I don't understand about radio. Well, friend, maybe we can help you. Abbott and I have been making our living on radio for the last ten years. Yeah, that's the one thing I can't understand. I... <laughs> Look, Abbott, now enough is enough. Now, I don't mind you putting your relatives on a payroll, but why do they have to come in and bother me? Uh... The three top. Here, bud, have a cigar. Here, Louie, have a cigar. rock a bye baby. Have a cigar, Malnick. Here, give all the boys in the band one, too. rock a bye baby. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, 
Get a load of my nephew. Hey, Joe, why are you passing out cigars? I just got a call from the wife, bud. There's a patter of little feet around my house. Everybody have a cigar! rock a baby in the treetop! Right. I got it. I got it. Hello? Yes? Just a minute. For you, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Louis. You're welcome. Hello? Is that so? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Goodbye. All right, give back your cigars. Everybody, give back your cigars. But, 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 but Joe, Joe, what about the patter, that patter of little feet around the house? My wife just found out it's Mike. <laughs> That's another one of Abbott's old... Abbott, why don't you keep those Republican relations of yours out of here? Wait a minute. What, what makes you think my relations are Republican? There can't be that many Democrats out of work. I... <laughs> Costello, why you? Why must you be so bitter towards my relatives? You should you should learn to be friendly with people. Don't you have any hum, human interest? Only when I go to a burlesque show. <laughs> <laughs> What's the burlesque show got to do with human interest? Well, I'm human, and that's my interest. I... <laughs> no, I mean you should try to be more kind to people. Even animals and birds and bees love each other. Why don't you get closer to nature and become a nature lover? I'm a nature lover. Well, if you are, then why do you spend all your time chasing girls? Well, that's my nature, lover. <laughs> Costello, why don't you stop chasing girls? You spend all your money on girls. This year, you ought, to, you ought to let me handle your money and invest it for you. Why, well, you might wind up with a corner on steel, selling cars. Yeah. Or a corner on wheat, selling flour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A corner on olive and vine, selling apples. Right. <laughs> well, that only proves that you have no sense of value. Now, which would you prefer, a six-foot blonde or a piece of valuable land? I'll take the blonde. <laughs> but the land I'm thinking of is on Wilshire Boulevard and has a beautiful front. The blonde I'm thinking of is on Wilshire Boulevard and has... You keep the land. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boy. Well, if it isn't our little Hiya, secretary, girl. the old of us. Who? Viola Vaughn, our little secretary. Well, Viola, you look gorgeous tonight. Ah. Uh -huh. How about you and me taking a ride in my car after the show? I found a new place to park. Really? A new place to park? Mm-hmm. Up in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, a new place. You dummy, why every guy and his brother parks up in the Hollywood Hills. They do not. I was up there last night, and uh, I looked in every car, and there wasn't one guy up there with his brother. <laughs> The boys are backstage cooking up the next act. Let's eavesdrop on this. Have you ever wondered just how a fast-moving crime drama could be offered as a public service? Well, that's just what happens each Friday night when This Is Your FBI is broadcast over most ABC stations. You see, This Is Your FBI is broadcast with the full cooperation and approval of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The full cooperation and approval. Each Friday night, This Is Your FBI dramatizes an authentic case based on one taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in Washington, showing the methods with which criminals work and how our federal agents track them down. Further, these exciting dramas point out just how plain, ordinary citizens are duped by these criminals and so put listeners on guard against their being taken in by similar methods. This, then, is how the program performs a public service. Listen when This Is Your FBI is heard over most of these ABC stations tomorrow night and every Friday night. Now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. And now the spotlight turns to how winters are singing star. Here he is with Matty Malnick and his orchestra. Great guns, holy mackerel, and a couple of gullies, too. Great guns. Never thought these eyes would see anything like you. First came talking pictures, then came television. Now they're making dreams come true. Land sakes, it's enough to make a body get over black. By gosh, 
just wonder what these modern fellas will think of me. You top anything of Thomas Edison with hot and cold running shivers and superatomic charm. And here you are in my arms, great God. And say, it's enough to make a body get overplayed. My gosh, wonder what these modern fellas will think of me. You top anything of Thomas Edison with hot and cold running shivers and superatomic charms. And here you are in my arms, great God. I go home a little early tonight. What for? I got to do a little work on my Sam Shovel Crime Laboratory. I'm going to mix some nitroglycerin with hydrochloric acid and TNT and heat the mixer on my stove. You dummy, if you do that, you'll blow the roof off your house tonight. Oh, no, I won't. What makes you so sure? I blew it off last night. Costello, <laughs> why don't you quit the Sam Shovel detective business? You're not smart enough to be a detective. You're ignorant, illiterate, and uneducated. I am not uneducated. I went to school and I was smart too, Abbott. And I'll never forget the day I was promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade. The day you were promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade? Yes. How can you remember that? Because that morning I was so nervous I had to get my mother to shave me. <laughs> and anyway, I'm not going to quit the Sam Shovel's detective theory. Our listeners are crazy about it. Here's a fan letter I got today. And it says, Dear Lou Costello, at Sam Shovel the detective, you are the funniest guy I ever heard. When I listen to you, I shake the house with laughter. Last week, I laughed so hard, I thought the ceiling would cave in. I've come to the studio to see you tonight. Mr. Costello, there's a man here to see you. What does he look like? I can't, can't tell. He's all covered with plaster. I figured out the <laughs> What's your Sam Shovel story about tonight, Lou? Well, it's one of my oriental cases, Abbott. One of my oriental cases. I call it the case of the Chinaman who poisoned his own food, or he committed shop suicide. <laughs> well, that's one with the case. Oh, definitely. Yes. I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. They call me a private eye. I can smell a murder a mile away. I can smell a frame up. I can smell anything crooked. Private eye. They ought to call me private nose. <laughs> I'm sitting here in my little office. I look at myself in the mirror. I notice that my hair needs shortening. I'm all out of Crisco. <laughs> My handsome face smiles back at me from the mirror. No wonder the girls are crazy about me. Before I became a detective, I had girls to burn. Yes, I had girls to burn, but I gave it up. I found out there's no fun in burning girls. <laughs> I noticed a mouse crawling across my office door. It's a church mouse. <laughs> I open a drawer of my desk to check my equipment. There's my gun. There's my handcuffs. There's my binoculars. Comrade, I got the plans for the secret weapon. Those are my spy glasses. <laughs> I decide to fill out my application for a 1949 California driver's license. They're making the test tougher this year. To get a license, you have to learn to speak pig Latin. That's so you can talk to the road hogs in Hollywood. <laughs> On my desk, I noticed a picture of one of the cleverest women crooks in the business. She was what the police call a top drawer thief. When I finally caught her, she had a garage full of top drawers. <laughs> she was a cute girl, but very shy. The first time I saw her, she dropped her eyes. I picked them up. <laughs> one was an agate. <laughs> she had a little turned-up nose, a real turned-up nose. Every time she sneezed, she blew her hat off. <laughs> she had a very clever racket. She'd make a friend of a guy, kiss him, and give him a cold. 
Every guy she met, she'd give him a kiss and give him a cold. I finally arrested her for making friends and influencing people. <laughs> you work hard in this detective racket. I always remember my mother's advice. She said to me, Sam, if you want to get a job, remember the early bird catches the worm. I followed that advice for 20 years. I never got a job, but I got about 8 million worms. <laughs> she also gave me my brother, Pat, his advice also. She said to him, go west, young man, go west. He followed her advice and drowned. <laughs> he was living in Pismo Beach at the time. <laughs> Suddenly, I see someone coming into the office. Hello, Sam Shovel. Hello, Lieutenant Abbott. Pull up a chair and sit down. I'm tired. I've been taking care of the Mount Cops horses. I've been working in the stables all day. Then pull up a window and sit down. <laughs> Sam, I've been working on a fur robbery case. Somebody stole a mink coat, and the mink coats are hard to identify. I'm an expert on furs, Lieutenant. You know, there's two types of mink, male and female mink. Sam, that's a good thing to know. Yes, especially if you happen to be a mink. <laughs> oh, forget about the case, Sam. Tell me, how do you like my new suit? I had to admit to Lieutenant Abbott that he had good taste for clothes. Of all the detectives in town, Abbott has the best taste for clothes. He can chew up a vest and tell you what kind of gravy is on it. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, why do you always wear that big elk's tooth with a diamond in it? What's wrong with that, Sam? Lots of men wear a big elk's tooth with a diamond in it. In the middle of their upper plate. <laughs> this remark made Lieutenant Abbott smile. I love to see him smile. He only has two teeth. <laughs> but he has the most beautiful set of gums I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Sam, you've got to admit I'm a self-made man. When I was born, I was very poor. I had nothing. Lieutenant Abbott is right. He came into this world empty-handed, and he had a head to match. Sam, I worked hard to get where I am For 20 years, I've had my nose to the grindstone Must have been a butte when you started <laughs> Never mind that Sam, we've got to do something about crime in this town Every day it gets worse uh, I know, only last week the girl next door Mary Brown had her good name ruined Mary Brown? Mary Brown had her good name ruined? How did it happen? She married a guy named Hoop and Snorter. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel, private detective speaking. Detective Sam Shovel, this is Constable Smith speaking. Uh, 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 I've got an unsolved murder out here. I need your help. Uh, come out to the Jones Farm at once. Constable, I'll be glad to take the case. How do I get to the Jones Farm for my office? Well, now, let me see. Uh, let me see. I'm at Jones Farm. Oh, yeah. They drive out the cooker by the turnpike and get to the schoolhouse. Turn left. Why don't I take the road to the left? Oh, no, that's the bad one. <laughs> Ain't there a better road than that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just drive down Route 101. That's a fine road. Will that get me there? Oh, no, but it's a fine road. <laughs> Look, Constable, I can't work on a case unless I get to the Jones farm. Uh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, say, uh, Sam Shovel, uh, do you know where the new Hollywood Freeway is? Yes. Uh, tell me something, will you? Yes. When are they going to finish that darn thing? How do I get to the Jones Farm? Oh, the Jones Farm. Uh, well, well, where are you now? I'm in Los Angeles. My golly, I just happened to think. What? You know something? You can't get here from there. <laughs> What's up, Sam? It's murder. Come on, we're going to the Jones' farm. <laughs> Suddenly, I noticed a sign that said this will take you to the Jones' farm. Abbott and I sat on that sign for an hour. It didn't move an inch. There's the way, Sam. I'll turn in this driveway. Lieutenant Abbott, you're a mighty reckless driver. You shouldn't drive that car so fast. Sam, it's my car. I'll drive it that way till it falls apart. You've got to be careful what you say in front of these old cars. Well, well, I'll see you got here, Sam Shovel. Uh, 
Constable, hmm? Sam and I are here to investigate the murder. Hmm? Who's the victim? Oh, Farmer Jones. Uh, you'll find the body out there in the chicken coop. Well, good luck, boys. Well, so we went into the chicken coop. I started looking for clues. Sam, that big rooster looks suspicious to me. Look, he's got an axe under his left wing. I'll question him, Lieutenant. Mr. Rooster, did you kill Farmer Jones? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, today is Sunday, and all those chickens were just dying to have some real seven fried farmer. All the boys will be back to a curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. And now here's your master of ceremonies, that quizzical money man of the highest rank, with a thousand dollars or more to start tonight's bank, Bert Parks. Does that introduction sound familiar? Well, it should, because that's the way ABC's Break the Bank, long one of radio's most popular quiz shows, starts off each Friday night. One of the reasons for its popularity is Burt Park's mastery as MC. Another reason stems from the fun and suspense when contestants face Burt Park. They have the opportunity of breaking the bank for at least $1,000, and the bank has mounted to more than $9,000. Then, too, there's the exciting wishbowl feature, where listeners 16 years or older are eligible to enter their names in a giant wishbowl. Winners receive the opportunity to break the bank, plus other extras. Yes, from start to finish, you'll find Break the Bank tops in entertainment. So listen when it's on the air tomorrow night over most ABC stations. And now back for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello show. gentlemen, before Abbott and Costello return for a final word, we'd like to express our thanks to these wonderfully funny guys for the many hours of comedy they've brought to ABC Network listeners since 1947. For more than 130 consecutive weeks, they've continued appearing before the ABC microphone. And now they take their first vacation. Have fun this summer, fellas, and here's hoping we'll all be hearing you soon again. Let's tell the listeners who the people are that helped out uh, to put our show on. Yes, you're not kidding. You mean the people that put our show together? Tonight they nearly tore it apart. <laughs> now, that's all the more reason why we should tell the listeners who they are. Okay, our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Collins, Pat Costello. Our producer is Charles Vance. And now let's forget our band leader is Matty Malik and our singer is Hal Winters. Night, folks. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Good night. <laughs> The Abbott and Costello Show was produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. 8 o'clock at KECA, AM and FM, Los Angeles. Just one dollar more from those who have contributed will save the Red Cross program, which otherwise might be cut back. Yes, just a little more will help save many more lives. Send another dollar to Red Cross, Los Angeles 6.